Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Well, from the Nebraska Library Commission, but not at the commission at the moment. Voting <laughs> in from home. <laughs> um, uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available on our website for you to watch later at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Um, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. For any of you who are um, not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, and so we provide services and training and um, resources and grants to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows from Encompass on Encompass Live from all types of libraries. Yeah, uh, for all types of libraries, public, academic, uh, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies, um, anything and everything. Uh, really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we bring in guest speakers sometimes from outside the Library Commission to do shows for us on Encompass Live, um, but we also have Library Commission staff that present on services and programs and things we do here through the Commission, and that's what we have today. Um, today joining us today is Sally Snyder. Good morning, Sally. Good morning. And she is our coordinator of children and young adult library services at the Nebraska Library Commission. And um, also Amy Owen, who is, oh, good morning, Amy. Hi. Who is our information services librarian of the commission. And they both uh, coordinate, run, keep going, our um, One Book for Nebraska Kids and Teens program that we have here at the state at, in Nebraska. And um, I'm just going to hand over to you both to tell us all about our program and how it's done and everything and anything you'd ever want to know about it. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll only talk about the parts we want people to know about and yeah. keep the other stuff under, under the table <laughs> like there is any. <laughs> well, when I became the, the children's and teen youth services coordinator here, um, it was recommended to me by Sharon Osenka, who at that time was the Meridian Library System Administrator. She said, we're having one book, one Nebraska. We need something for kids. That would be great. So it was her idea, and we talked about it. And, and she suggested the first book that we ever had, which is Rescue Josh McGuire, which um, was one that she was very keen on us doing. And I thought, let's just start with that one, because it's a good story, and it's a good discussion. And things, things grew from there, but she got me started with it, and I appreciate that. So we, then we ended up initially, well, I should just show you how to get to our page first. You can go to, right here is Children and YA, and if you go over here, there is, whoops, this is how, what I'm bad at. Okay, this is really hard. <laughs> One yeah. book for kids and teens, right there. So you can just click on that. Or you can go up here to our search box and just type in one book, and it will take you to this list. Why can't I? I didn't type it very well, did I? What happened? This isn't working very well. I think there are. Yeah. How things go? I'm going to try again. Yeah. One. Maybe our keyboard is not active anymore. That could be it. Okay, so oh, we're gonna. On? Oh, I don't see a button for it. I didn't even think about that. I looked around and I didn't see hmm. the, the battery the about to be gone. Then. So instead of this, we'll go back here and do the first way. The second way will work if your keyboard's working. So yeah, let's just go here. Wireless keyboard in there that might need uh, updating or. Yes. So here's the main page for One Book for Nebraska Kids or One Book for Nebraska Teens. 
because we needed to specify that. The Nebraska Kids book is aimed at what I call upper elementary and nobody else in the world ever does anymore because I'm older, um, which is, you know, like grades four to six, which is just getting into middle school now. And then the one book for Nebraska teens, most of the time it's been aimed at high school level books because a number of librarians asked me that early on because uh, the Golden Sower Award, which is the Nebraska Children Choice Book Award, didn't have a, a high school level book. And so a lot of them are aimed at high school level. A few of them are more middle school. So as you look, you can kind of get a sense for which titles might be more in line with whatever group you're looking to work with. And initially we had one book for Nebraska kids the first year, and then that carried over the next year. Then we named the one book for Nebraska teens. So it was only every other year that a new book for the group was named. Well, after a few years of that, a number of librarians told me, let's just have a new book for each of them every year. And I said, okay, because people are using it. I want to make them happy. So we did that, and it's it's been a good change. Um, the criteria for how we choose the books, and it's basically a small group here at the commission, maybe just us. Sometimes somebody else helps us. Um, we want it to be available in paperback just because of the cost of the books and my, my vague idea that it's a little less expensive to mail lighter weight books, but there's not that much difference in a way, I don't suppose. Not, between, not terribly, yeah. but. And these are probably obvious criteria, but so paperback, it needs to be of interest to the age group. So it needs to be something that kids are gonna to wanna to pick up and read. Also, it needs to provide good discussion. And that's a tricky one because there are books that people love, but it doesn't, and they're fun. And I have them in your library, but it doesn't really promote any kind of discussion. Yeah. When you have trouble writing discussion questions, then you have to go, oh dear, this could be a problem. And um, we also have that it should not be a recent Golden Sower nominee because the Golden Sower draws a lot of attention to their list of books, which is great. It's great for kids to see these 10 books, in these different groups. There are three groups now, and is it next year that the fourth group is gonna start with the Golden Sower, yeah. the older yeah. kids? So that'll be terrific too. But because there are so many books out there that um, kids and teens can read, we, we thought we won't step on their toes and we'll find other titles that mm -hmm. are also good discussion books and of interest to teens and kids. And, um, and when we say not recent, do we have a cutoff or is that just kind of a case by case basis? How far back is not recent? I, yes, it's just uh, whatever Sally thinks. <laughs> but we could do that. We could, in, we could put in a, a, a year. Yeah. You know, say five years because yeah. kids are through high school. Hopefully they're done. Yeah, it would be a different group of yeah. kids reading the, the book. So, so that's one example, yeah. Well, I will take us through the website. So this is our main page. Um, previously, we had every single selection all the way down and you scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. But now our main page only shows you the current year. And then when we have picked next year's book, we will have some brief information below. But we have not yet picked the 2025 book. Um, but if you are looking for the older books, you can jump to our past page and that's gonna show you everything we've ever picked along with the activities and other links. And you can see if we start, oops, sorry, all the way at the bottom, you can see when it was just a kid's book and then a teen book, and then a kid's book, and a teen book, and the years that we skipped, and then when it starts being both kids and teens. I will also point out that um, the activities that are available, uh, we used to do more of a, a printout, word searches, crossword puzzles, things like that, but in recent years, we've moved away from that um, to more activity-based, ideas. So for this year's books, which are Parachute Kids by Betty C. Tang and Between the Lines by Nikki Grimes, um, we have 
some craft projects. We have some parachute kits to graphic novels. So we have some blank comic book pages for kids to make their own. Uh, we have a book review sheet so the kids can give their own book review. Do they recommend it? What kind of words would they describe it as? And of course, you could print that off for any book that your group is reading. Uh, for Between the Lines, which is about a poetry class, a high school poetry class, we have some uh, information on hosting your own poetry slam from the ALA Teen Reading Week. We have some blackout poetry ideas, uh, which might be a little simpler, quicker activity than, than a whole poetry workshop. So uh, blackout poetry is when you take a page of text, maybe a book that you've weeded and torn apart, and you uh, circle words in it to make a poem, and then you can color over it or black out the rest of the book. So it's kind of fun. And something to do with those books that yes, and something to do with those books that have been damaged or being otherwise discarded. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the books that we have for one book for Nebraska Kids and Teens are also available as book club kits. And that link will be there. Um, and that'll take you directly to the book club kit, which you can request. Uh, we provide these books to both our library collection and also to the systems. Um, our book club kits, we try to get at least 10 copies of those. Um, and they will have either read our discussion questions, or this one has teaching notes and some other activities if those are available. If that, if you're waiting for this kit, it's not available. I also added some read-alike books here. You can print this off. So um, we compiled this list with the help of our novel list database which is available through Nebraska Access, and it only includes titles that we own in our book kit collection. There's many great read-alikes out there, but we don't happen to have all of those just yet. So for this particular book, I was looking for books that were realistic fiction, maybe graphic novels, um, an immigrant experience. This book is about a family that's uh, moving from Taiwan, and the parents end up leaving, and so the kids are fending for themselves for a time. So. Uh, the parents are going back to their to Taiwan to get. They had a visit visiting visa, and they're going back to start the process of actually immigrating here. And so they left the kids here, signed up for school. Mm -hmm. They have an apartment. They left the money, and I think the oldest, the daughter, is the oldest at sixteen. Mm -hmm. I think she is. So, yeah. Yeah. So th three kids in America by themselves having to both take care of themselves and their households, get along, and not get into any trouble while they're alone. And, so. and learn English better. Yeah. They, they've learned English, but you know, it's one thing to learn it and one thing to, to live it surrounding. Very much so. Been to another country to go. Mm. Um, one of the activities uh, we put up here is an alphabet soup game where you can do this in, if you have a group of kids that have read it, go through and try to name something from every letter of the alphabet that's in the book, a character or an event or a place or an object. And this is trickier than you think sometimes. You don't cover all those letters, but, uh, and I didn't put my example up because I wanted it to be a little bit more open-ended. And another activity we have uh, are these. In, in the story, the older brother makes a origami doll for the little sister because she's lonely without her friends. So I got permission from this blog or author to include her link on our site. And uh, you can make your own little doll. They're very cute. They're very simple. And it's it's fun activity just if you want something that's, that's less uh, discussion intense and just more of a fun craft idea. So. Those are adorable. I love those. Uh, I want to make one yeah. for myself now. <laughs> yes, they're very fun. I have some paper at my desk, Krista. I'll leave you some when you come back in. <laughs> <laughs> Got to test out all of the activities, yes, to make sure. Yeah, yeah. And when we can, we try to we try to link to author information. Some authors are more uh, their websites are more detailed than others. So I believe this this author uh, she's also an animator. So she does. I don't know if it's going to open for us. 
she uh, she does illustrations, but she's also done animations for uh, some movies and things. I think some Pixar maybe. So nice. yeah, she's pretty talented. Um, for the teen book, Nikki Grimes, uh, she has tons of books. Yeah. So she's got her website's got quite a bit on it. Uh, this book was the companion book to her earlier book, uh, Bronx Masquerade. Yeah. And she has she has her own activities. I think many many of the discussion guides that we used were just directly from her. Uh, we also have the book club kit for this. We have 10 copies. We also have Bronx Masquerade if you wanted to read that. I believe that's the same discussion and activity guide there. Uh, for the read-alikes for this, I included Bronx Masquerade and also some other books with similar uh, kind of this coming of age high school going through different realistic scenarios like these kids are going through. So for activities, I would mention the blackout poetry and the how to host a poetry slam. I also threw in some Mad Libs where we just took a passage from the book and you can create your own. That's fun. That could come up with anything. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, same mini book review. And what else? Hmm. Um, if you know if, if this isn't available or those read alikes aren't available, if you haven't checked out our book club kits, we have lots and lots of books for kids in YA. You can search this by genre or by age, grade level. Um, if you need a certain number of copies, we have this. We have flexible loan periods. So if this is for a summer reading group or your classroom. We can base the loan period on your needs as long as they're not, you know, being requested by someone else. So that's it that it's you mentioned that because someone did have a question about are these um is this program for well, I guess the whole program itself, um, they said is this for public libraries or school libraries? And um I suppose that question could be both the program itself and our book club kit. So you can answer both yeah. those kind of questions about both those yeah. things. Uh-huh. Um, for both. We do for schools, for uh, public libraries. We have some uh, institutional libraries that borrow for internal book groups. Um, for school use, we like you to request through the, li the school librarian. Uh, so if it's for a classroom, just go to your media center and, and ask them to request it for you. Because um, we, we'd like to have a name that we know to be our point of contact. But we can we loan from anywhere from, uh, you know, three weeks to a whole semester, depending on the book and what you need. So nice. Okay. But yeah, open to everybody as long as they're in Nebraska and uh, they have a, a librarian contact that we can use. So if you're in a non-school uh, book group, just go to your public library and they can request it for you also. So Good thing, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're not part of a school, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, should I go back to our web page and sure. talk a little bit about yeah, how we do selecting or yeah, let's back up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So again, from here, I'm just going to hop down to the when we started, Rescue Josh McGuire, and you can see that, and then the book thief. What we've tried to do throughout um, the history of this is to find different genres, uh, different we have been for a while, we're making sure that if one year we had the male main character, the next year we had a female main character so that we were being more representative of points of view and things. Um, parts of our history, parts science fiction-y with Unwind. Um, this one, the last newspaper boy in America, is a wonderful book. It was hard to get discussion questions on that uh, one. Yeah. But it, so I, and then we get to the two. So we have science fiction. This is a hilarious book, Aliens on Vacation. The kid goes to help his grandma run her her um, bed and breakfast, and it's actually a 
a bed and breakfast for aliens from other planets to come to Earth and be on vacation here. And so she has to make sure they have good disguises and all this. And this kid is just overwhelmed by, this is so weird, <laughs> but it's hilarious. <laughs> so th that's fun if you're looking for something hilarious and also uh, interesting, because why can't they come to Earth for vacation? Yeah. They could be accommodating, as long as they follow our rules. And then um, I was thinking of getting up here. Stick dog. Oh, I do. I do want to mention that um, we did have the author of Stick Dog, Tom Brown. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Tom, Tom Watson. Watson. I'm yeah. sorry, Tom Watson. He came for one of our Encompass lives. Yeah. And, and at the end of that, almost an hour in, he sh he had trouble getting in. Um, he shows shows up and talks about things and demonstrates how to draw the stick dots is terrific. Oh yeah. Anytime you want to just go there and show it to the kids in your classroom or at, at the library and then have them draw stick dots. That was it's fun. great. And we'll have to find where that is on the on our our archive. There's a challenge for you, um Krista to see. I'll link to the link to that. I have about yeah. That. Well we should yeah we should link to that here. Yeah. That's a good point. It should be in our so, show archives for Income is Live, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Bass Reeves, that is, well, it's by Gary Paulson, but it's about a black, um, was he a Texas Ranger? He was a, a marshal yes. yeah. in the West, and he was amazing at, at what he did, and he even arrested his own son for a crime. Yeah. So he... Yeah, and I think there's a new series out about oh, him. I think it's on yeah. Paramount Plus. I haven't watched it, it yet. Yes, there is a new one out. I haven't. I've only seen one episode of it. It was good. So again, we're trying different genres, different um, cultures represented as we move along. Here we have Killer of Enemies, which is by Joseph Bouchak, which is about Native American main character. She's named for Lozen, I think her name is. I can almost read it up there. <laughs> She's named for a historic, legendary figure, and she has some of those same powers in protecting mm -hmm. people from these monsters that roam the world. It's a futuristic story. dystopian. <laughs> yeah, this Thank you, dystopian. So, and then of course, um, Charlie Joe Jackson's Guide to Not Reading. Everybody should check that out because yeah, he's pretty adamant about not reading. The Boy in the Black Suit by Jason Reynolds and A Long Pitch Home by um, Natalie Diaz. I can't quite remember. Lorenzi. Lorenzi. Yeah. Excellent books. And we've read through so many books, and you can only pick one for each yeah. age group per year. So I don't even know what our discard list looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what's great, though, is these books are still here on the list and we still have the book club kits for them. So people can go back to if they if they um, if you have an ongoing kids or, or start if you just start up a teens or a kids book club. Um, right. And you can always go back and get um, do some of the previous ones. You don't have to just do the one okay. in one year that we happen to have, that you all have happened exactly. to pick. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's that's why they're up here and they're still now. The, the activities that Amy was talking about, because those are nice ideas of the other things to do besides the puzzle pages that I used to always make because I was in a rut. And it's okay, but I make quite a few myself. So yeah, yeah. She but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we don't have to have puzzle pages all the time. And I was just going to mention one thing. And when I was looking at this and thinking about our discussion today, I got to thinking about how we want it to be a good discussion book. And my question for you, Amy, and anybody else who wants to answer, is it too hard to have discussions with a humor book? Because there are some great humorous books out there, and kids love humor, and writers write great humor, and I don't have a humor book in here yet. We have some funny books. We, don't, we have, well, like Charlie Joe Jackson's pretty yeah. funny. That's true. So maybe I'm just being too... Too not narrowing yeah. the de definition of humor books. I guess it just depends on the book, because like you said, not all books lend themselves to discussion, but I don't think it's necessarily a quality of a humor book. It just depends on the story itself and what 
what there is to talk about. So yeah, I don't think the genre limits you. It's just the story itself. So good answer. Because I was excited this year for the first time we have a graphic novel in Parachute Kids. And a brand new one. It was had just yes. come out when we chose this one. That's so true. that was one of the few brand new books that we've used. Because usually we're just a little bit older in our choices. Well, they're easier to get. Yeah, it's nice to bring up books that maybe people haven't haven't hadn't seen when they first came out. Right. Yeah. So let's see. So future selections, like we said, we haven't really started talking about that yet, and I already have some ideas, but they're not in paperback yet, so I'm going to have to rethink some of my ideas. So we did the book club kids. We haven't done the books in series. No, we haven't. That's we have another a question about the authors, um, too. You mentioned that um, the Stick Dog author um, participated. So when we pick these each year, do we, do, do we reach out to, well, to the authors, if they're living, um, to say, hey, this has been selected as Nebraska's? Like, how did he find out that we were doing it and then become part of the Encompass Live we did? That's such a good question. And I am such a bad person. I did reach out. I have reached out to some authors, but mm -hmm. um, the one about the Green Glass Sea by Ellen Clages, mm -hmm. she contacted me and said, "Is this real? Am I really this?" <laughs> and I went, "Oh my gosh, I've never come." And she, you know, she was she came to Nebraska and visited libraries. She was wonderful, and and uh, she laughed. When, when I, we were at one of the libraries where the kids were there asking questions and they asked her, how did you find out about this? And she, and I picked up my notebook I had there and I covered up my face. She looked over at me, she said, I knew you were. <laughs> well, you know, I was looking on the internet and it, my name came up and I thought, wow, maybe this, this is wonderful if it's true. So she, she uh, looked at it and it looked real. So she emailed me and I emailed back sheepishly saying, well, yes, as a matter of fact, you are. And sorry, I didn't contact you before now. So I'm going to try and be better about that. And, and then Amy's going to nudge me about it, right, Amy? <laughs> because of, um, sometimes you email authors, and of course, uh, they have, like Jason Reynolds, I did email him and invited him to be on the show where we talked about his book, but he did not respond. I think he was pretty busy that year. Yeah. Also, he. Yeah, he's been very busy, and I don't blame him a bit. But I thought, well, I might as well give him a chance. Yeah, if, just if you wanted to. to notify them definitely at, at least yeah. saying hey, your book has been selected yes. for this, um, Nebraska statewide program. Yeah, um, but, and see if they do want to like like the Green Glassy author if they do want to come along come to the state to do any sort of um, events or activities or. Um, programs with any of the libraries or any of the schools. Authors love talking about yes. their own books, so yeah, <laughs> when, if they yeah. have the time and the availability, yeah. We've been fortunate that, um, no, I forgot, I'm going to rescue Josh McGuire, the author for that, he came and did, uh, went across the state for a week, and he was amazing, and there's been, um, uh, Neil Schusterman came across the state, and that's back when it was easier to do and we yeah. could afford it. But now I gotta pick not famous people. <laughs> I would love to have Jason Reynolds come to Nebraska and travel across the state. He would be wonderful. But um I don't even know what he charges now for Yeah. Because we got Neil Schusterman at a discount and we were <laughs> fortunate. Because when I contacted him, it was about a year before he would come and we walked into a price that was by the time he came here, he was charging $5,000 a day, wow. which is reasonable for him. Oh, but yeah. We, we did better. <laughs> so I'll say. Thing about this program, so, yeah. unlike the One Book, One Nebraska, these are these books do not have to have that Nebraska connection. No. True. No, they're just Either books that we think content. people would yeah. enjoy reading altogether. So. Yeah. so it's kind of easier sometimes, I think, with One Book, One Nebraska that Sometimes, since it's a Nebraska connection, and if it's a Nebraska author, they live here already, so it's easy to get them to just yeah. do something. Um, with this program, they could be anywhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
we don't even really have a rule that they have to live in the United States. No, we don't. See, it, I don't we don't have a lot of limits. So. <laughs> For the golden sower, they yeah. need to be living in the country at least half the year. I think so. We had one author that was they lived in the U.S. half the year and in Australia for the other half the year, and so we got that approved by the Golden Sower Committee that it that was okay. <laughs> the hard, the point was, could they come to conference for? Right, to receive their Yeah. When are you in the United States? <laughs> yeah. Um, since we're on this part of the website, our our books last year were The Birch Bark House by uh, Louise Erdrich and Not If I Save You First by Allie Carter. Uh, the Birch Bark House, I, I love this book. It, um, it's been suggested as a something to read if you're really into Little House on the Prairie because it's a indigenous child and a, a year in her life. So at about, at about the same time period. So, uh, and she's not not local, but in the Midwest. Yeah, she's in uh, Minnesota, I believe. But I so. um, some of the activities we picked for this were um, there is a website that has the sounds of the Birch Bark House and, and the different uh, sounds and nature of the area that uh, this child is living in. If they can get it to come up, I'm not sure. Oh, no, no, China. Yeah. And yeah, it's a, it's a companion for this series, and that book, uh, Birch Bark House, is the first in a series. Um, but yeah, this is uh, they learn all about the Ojibwe language in this site. So this is really cool, and it, it's uh, something that we don't always learn about. I think we're all trying to learn more about the peoples that were originally here. So and, um, there's also a map of the indigenous tribes of Nebraska. So you can kind of see, you know, say, you know, who lived on the land before my house is here. So I think my, I grew up right around here. So the activity. And then there is for more fun, a snowball fight. You can either ball up paper or you can put your discussion questions on the paper, ball them up and throw them at each other. And uh, another way to do discussion questions. So that's or good. just throw paper at each other. Because <laughs> why not? Yes. And both books kind of take place in the winter at some point. So there is a snowball fight for, for uh, Not If I Save You First as well. And um, this book takes place in the wilderness of Alaska. So we also have How to Make an Axe Throwing Game. So that's fun. I would suggest using something soft. And specifically axe throwing for kids. So it's safe. For kids. Yeah. Axe throwing for kids. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. No <laughs> danger here. So, but yeah, we really we were trying to get away from some of the more puzzle-based activities. So I was getting tired of making crossword puzzles. So. But you did such a good job. I know they were fun, but there's only so many you can do. I would make, if, if anyone wants a crossword puzzle, I'll make it for you. But, but um, as we mentioned, the Birch Bark House is part of a series, and if you go to our Ooh, Buy out menu, menu, yes. Under reference, you can reach our that it is hard to get to our books and series database where you can search by author book title or series title. And since our keyboard's not working, I'm going to go about this a different way. I'm going to go to the book club kit and it's going to say number one in the Birch Bark House series, and it's going to take oh, us clear. to the results of the in the books and series database and you can see all of the books in that series um, these little numbers out to the side these dvs these are talking book reference numbers so if you have patrons that are part of the talking book and braille service which is available to free for anyone who cannot read regular print either through a vis vis visual or physical disability they qualify for the talking book and braille program and so they can borrow books, recorded books. Um, most of our books are available through that program, but I believe that this year's graphic novel was not yet available for talking books. So yeah, so, so I know that yeah. the book series is very popular. People use that for all sorts of things. Yes. Um, yeah. Just, it's it's yeah. 
And if we're missing a series that, that you love, let us know. We are always adding things to it as we find them. So yeah, it's good to read things in order. <laughs> yes, I'm, really I'm kind of a stickler for yes. that for myself, but occasionally I won't know about a series till book three comes out and then I'm really disgruntled because now I have to read book one, two, and three. That takes more time, yes, but it's it so good. They're usually good, so it's worth it. So it's also good yeah, to okay. get into a title and you to realize ahead of time, oh, there's actually six of these. All right, let me mentally prepare for reading six books now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not just you want to go to the Nebraska Center for the books? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go out to the Nebraska Center for the Book page, and this is the organization that runs the One Book One Nebraska program. Um, you can go out to their official page for that, the Shearer's book, Dancing with, an Oct with the Octopus. Um, and they also have a link for the Kids and Teens program, which uh, just gives more details about our program. Uh, so just another way to get there, help us get this information out to people. So. And then down at the bottom again, they have that jump to yeah, the jump to the old, jump books. to the it jumps back to our oh i guess yeah, that that yeah, link needs to be updated so uh, if you go to the more recent ones it jumps to the individuals they haven't gotten all the way back okay yeah it looks okay. like yeah it looks like it yeah, so, yeah oh, it'll okay. jump yeah. to their yeah get to their same pages but yeah just another way to present that information so. and it's good so we know you know if you're you've heard about the one book one nebraska that's an uh for, it's usually it's an adult book. Um, it's generally for adults, um, depending on the topic um, and your your um, people's reading levels. As Sally says, you know these these things when we talk about what ages are all suggestions. It depends on who it is the the um, person reading um, when it comes to you know under eighteen and where, where they're at and um, what level you know book they can read and also the content of the book as well. You'd want to make sure you're careful of that with your kids. Um, parents with yeah. their kids about uh, you know, the current book this year, you know, being um, a very sensitive topic um, for the one book, one Nebraska, Dancing with the Opera, uh, Dancing with the Opera. Right. Um, but it's good that you, they do have the links saying, you know, here's the ones for teens and for even younger kids, if you want to do that same kind of program, if they see, you know, the adults or their yeah. parents, it's okay, you know what, there's one for you too. <laughs> yes. So I'd just like to say that if anyone out there listening to this live presentation or the recording has an idea of something you think might be great for discussion for kids or teens, just send me an email recommending the titles. Yeah. That you, and we'll see what we can do about checking into them because I have some ideas like I told Amy, but more suggestions are always helpful. Yeah. And if you come up with a an activity for one of our books that you'd like us to include, we can always do that as well. So Ooh, good idea. Yeah, if you've seen something or use something in your library or your school for um, one of your book talks or story times or something, yeah. Um, so does anybody else have any other questions? I just want to remind everybody. I try to remind people, and just, I realize I didn't do that for this show yet. Um, in the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, you can type in there any um, questions, comments you have, um, or any thoughts or, or suggestions about books that you think would be good for kids or teens to read um, for the upcoming year. Um, someone did ask about when do you make the final decision for the next year? So if they did want to suggest something, I guess we when would be the when should they get their in something to you or when should they look for being able to plan for 2025? I believe last year we announced it late summer. Yeah. So we try to announce it before the Nebraska Library Association conference because sure. then we can spread the word there. Mm -hmm. uh, There's kind of a tendency that we've had. But um, we haven't. Maybe we should just make a set date. And see. Yeah, make it more official. So it's been pretty September first, my parents' anniversary. There you go. <laughs> or or if we want something that moves around Labor Day, because who knows yeah. exactly when that'll be. 
from the start of the school year. Yeah. Okay. And that gives people a good amount of time, libraries a good amount of time to figure out what the new book is and if they want to use it in the next year. Um, and plan. Yes. We're, especially with our book club kits, I know they are very popular and you might get on a waiting list for when <laughs> uh, you right. get, you'll actually get the set. Yeah, I guess that's another reason we tend to go towards the end of summer and beginning of the school year so that teachers who are greatly deserve their time off in the summer shouldn't have to worry about this until mm. they're back. Of course, there's 10,000 things they need to do when they get back. I know sure. that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but if you suggest something after we've already picked for next year, we'll keep it in mind for the next year. So that's, that's true. Thing about this too. It doesn't have any sort of that publication deadline. Like the book for right. this year has to have been published within the last year or something. That's not yeah. something we're, we're no. yeah. It just needs to be available. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes paperbacks go out and come in and then go out of publication yeah. but um it's a really good book we could buy hardbacks sure yeah that's a challenge yeah. and we are doing like you did said we're talking about the book club kits we have <clears throat> the one at the commission but we are now also we have four regional library systems in the state for each area and we provide each of them with a set of these books as well yes um that that is one thing that our uh, book club catalog does is if the book is not available through us and this is for um, any title if another library is sharing it so in this case uh for parachute kids these three library systems have their copies that you could go out to free rivers and ask to borrow their copy so and they've got a they've got quite a few and oh, yeah. i think that just goes out to their the main book set. Oh yeah, they, it goes out to their, yeah. their main page, not directly to that book, but they do have kits that they loan out, each of those systems does. So that's very helpful too. Yeah. And for other books, I mean you might I think Carney is one that shares books. There's several libraries that share their books and that so if it's a title that we have that another library has, it'll show up on this site. So So I'm going to wait for suggestions. I'm yes. going to write up my list, and you're welcome to write up a list too of possibilities and any suggestions that come in. We'll add to that and see where we are in yeah in June. Yeah, I think it must. Okay, <laughs> to get started because <laughs> we have to read them. Yes, that's true. Right, you don't have time to read through them. Read them, yeah. And if it's an older book, it'll be. Um, Highly likely that the public library, either here or in Omaha, will have a copy of this to, to check out. Thank you. Were, the, were there any other questions, Krista? That's what I'm waiting to see. Yeah, does anybody have any other questions? Um, we're getting close to the top of the hour again, um, almost top, almost 11 central time. Does anybody have any last minute desperate questions you want to ask of um, Sally and Amy or anything you want to suggest? And you can always contact me later if you think of a, a question that we didn't answer and you want to know, email me or call me on the phone. Yep. We have an 800 number. information is on the website, yeah. I'm not seeing anything come in right now. That's fine. We can um, do our wrap up, I guess. Um, any last words, Sally and Amy, about the program that you want to share before I do my wrap up? For Just the want to say thank you for attending and thank you for listening and being interested in this program. And, and we will be thrilled if you decide to choose one of our one book for Nebraska kids or teens yeah. in the future to use with your group either in schools or public libraries or other organizations that we'd love to hear about yeah. what the kids thought of the book. Yes. That was That's a question that was I know on the um One Book One Nebraska page they share about events and things happening and they ask that libraries you know reach out to them and say, hey are you doing this, you know, are you doing anything? Let us know if you're having an event or something. Um I think that's more often like, you know, when if the author is coming to do an open discussion somewhere. Um do any of this really happen that way with this program? Is it generally just internal events? 
Well, not so much. We did early on, we had a, a evaluation sheet that we sent out and asked people to let us know if they did something and what the results were. And we kind of quit doing that because only a few ever came back. Mm -hmm. Never very many in any one year. Yeah. And it just kind of seemed an extra hassle for people. But I do occasionally get an email from somebody who just says, wow, the kids just loved whatever it was. And we had this and this activity was great. And, uh, and we're saying thank you for having this program. And so mm -hmm. it's just intermittent and um, based on the person who wants to just say thank you to us. And right. we could look and see who checks out these books from the, the book club yeah. kits, but I've never gotten to that. Yeah. Level up. But don't let that stop you. Just let us know what you think. We will ha happily take yeah. any feedback. So. We will take feedback. Yes, please. Yeah, and we do have some thank yous coming in through the chat. To you know, oh, thank you. Great, great program. Yeah, thank you, presenters. Yeah. Okay. Thank awesome. you, Kristen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. So yeah, I am going to pull back presenter control to my screen to do a wrap up here. So thank you so much, uh, Sally and Amy, for um, being here today to tell us all about this program. Being here again, to tell us all about our one book for Nebraska kids and teens. Um, and thank you everyone for attending and, and um, our show today. Um, as I said, the show has been is being recorded. <laughs> And um, these are upcoming shows. If you go to our Encompass Live website, um, if you just type in Encompass Live, the name of our show, and your search engine of choice, um, it'll come up with a link to our main page and a link to our archive page. Um, this is our upcoming shows, but our archives are here, and I'll show you that. Um, this is last week's show. That's the place we should go. Um, sorry? To the... We're trying to get back to you. Oh, it's Sorry, all right. I'm still talking. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm sharing my screen now. It all looks good. Yeah, you're fine. Um, this is our uh, most recent one. Today's um, recording will be on the top of the list here. Uh, should be done by the end of the day tomorrow at the very latest. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and, re and um, registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's available. We also push it out onto our social media. Um, while I'm here, we can do a search here. Um, and let's see, uh, what was it, stick dog? Let's try stick. There we go. We were talking about this. I just typed in stick in our search in our show archives. And here's the one from when um, Tom Watson was with us back in 2016. So if you wanted to, you can go there and watch the recording of how to, how to draw a stick dog yourself. <laughs> And like I said, it's about more than 45 minutes into the program. So if you just want to drag your, your thing along the bottom so you don't yeah. have to hear all of the program, but get to Tom. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you'll see here, we do have all of our show archives here. Um, so um, I do tell people to be just um, pay attention when you are watching any of our older shows. Um, you'll see. Um, there is an original broadcast date for all of them that you can see here, so you'll know when that show first um, went live. Uh, many of our shows will be test, stand the test of time, be fine to watch, and no problem, but some things will become old and outdated, information will become um, um, no longer be correct possibly because things have changed, um, links might be broken, resources and services may um, be totally different or not exist anymore. Uh, people will work in a different um, library possibly than they did when they spoke with us. Um, but so just pay attention to that when you're watching any of our show, um, our older shows. Um, we do have our show go archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which is January 2009. So this is our 16th year of the show. So we have um, 16 years of recordings here on this page. Um, and we will always have them available here. Um, something libraries do keep things for historical purposes often as long as we have a place to host them which right now is all the archives are on our nebraska library commission's youtube channel we'll always have them available for you um i did talk about social media we do have a facebook page i've got open over here um so if you like to use facebook give us a like and you'll get reminded of when our show is going live what our upcoming shows are when recordings are available here's 
that's in your recording of yesterday of last week's show. Um, so if you do like to use Encompass Live, you can do that. We also use our hashtag Encompass Live, a little abbreviation on Twitter and Instagram. So you can um, keep an eye on there as well to see um, what we're doing with the show. All right, so that wraps it up for today's show. Um, I am working on getting more dates filled in here. You see, I've got next week's and um, the end of the month, our pretty sweet check, our usual monthly pretty sweet check, but I'm, they'll, you'll, the calendar will get filled in as I'm talking to people and getting things finalized. So keep an eye on this um, for other um, topics coming up this month. Um, but next week, I will be doing um, Encompass Live and talking about our upcoming public library accreditation process. This is an annual process for libraries who need to renew or any libraries who want to become accredited here in the state of Nebraska. So I'll giving, giving a, a quick up, a short update on that. Um, there will be full, longer, three-hour, more intense workshops coming up um, later in the spring, too. So this is just a little short um, overview um, to get you started with that because the um, accreditation is coming up. Yeah. Other than that, that wraps it up for today. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thanks again, Sally and Amy. Good to see you both. Thank you. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see some of you on a future episode of Encompass Live. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah.